So back to our basic text. We got our headings, we got our uh, paragraph, we got a link. What else might be very basic to an uh, HTML document? Not sure if you know it, but lists are also quite common. If we have a navigation like this, with a drop down like this, that's basically a list and that's basically a list, right? It might not have bullet points or anything like this, but it is a list of items. And therefore we got this unordered list tag, which is UL for unordered list. And this tag alone won't create a list. A list also needs items, right? So this tag is used in the way that we define the list and then we define a list item, LI for list item, a list item. Now let me just copy this line to create a second list item. And if we reload our page, we got our list here with the two list items we just defined. As I said, this one does have bullet points because we're not applying any styles to it, where this page clearly applies some styling, which says, okay, no bullet points, gray background, when we hover over it, it should have a dark gray background and so on. This list also has links within it, as you can see. We could do this too. We can say, okay, let's add a link here. href point to Google again. As you can see, I can leave out the www. So let's create a link again. List item should be inside this link. And if we reload, we got a list item with a link in it. So we can really encapsulate our tags within each other. And this is quite common in HTML that you got several levels of tags. So you got an unordered list with list items in it with links in it, for example. So that's the structure of an HTML document I was talking of. So headings, paragraph, links, lists, what else do we have? By the way, I just recognized something which is a bit embarrassing. Your whole document, HTML, document, the head and body section is encapsulated by an HTML tag, which basically tells, okay, this is all HTML. As you did see, the page worked without these tags too, but we're writing semantically correct HTML. Therefore, it might not be bad that I forgot it, because you could really see the difference. It's working the other way too, but we want to create a correct structure here, which again has its reason in a sense of how it is displayed on different devices or accessed by things like screen readers. Okay, so back to our important HTML tags. I just saw that and wanted to inject it real quick. Another important thing we definitely have on many pages are images. Here we got our image tag, which is just IMG for image short form. And this is a special tag because it is self-closing, which means we don't have this structure here with opening tag, closing tag, but instead we got image and then in the same tag we got a slash and the closing tag that the greater than sign immediately. This is because an image tag doesn't hold any content which you would write between the opening and closing tag. Instead, an image is all defined by the attributes you give it, such as the source of our image. Now, I looked up some random image on Google. So I'm just inserting this, just deep linking here. So we got our source. Now, let's refresh our website and we got this image here. Oops. Didn't want to do that. Now, additional attributes we have here are an alt text for when the image is not loaded corrected. This is a text which will be displayed instead. We also get a width of, which gives us the possibility to override the default width of the image. So this is just 
the size the image normally has. And if I give it a width of 200, it automatic, automatically scales down. So it keeps its height and just changes the width. Now, if you also define a height of, let's say, 400 pixels, oops, let's click, oh, can't click today. Then we got this skewed image here because these attributes override the default behavior of first taking the standard the normal size of the image, second adjusting it if we give if we define one dimension, either height or width, then adjusting the different, the other one. And then if we give both, it uses both. So just removing that. Oh, by the way, this PX is one of the available units we have and we will come back to those when we are actually discussing CSS. So that's the image. We got some more attributes we could use but let's stay basic here. Now another thing we definitely have on many pages are forms where a user has to enter some data. Forms also consist of several tags. So they start with a form tag which also has a closing tag and between this form tags we define the elements of our form. So for example we got an input tag for an input element where a user can input data um, of a type which is an attribute we have to provide. Let's say text. It could also be password for example which is also an input box but it automatically turns all characters to stars so other people looking at your screen can't see your password. And this also is a self-closing tag. So it's just with the, as with the image, we just write slash and then greater than. And we also provide a name attribute, which is important when the form is actually sent to the server that it can identify which input element got which value by the user. And this is identif identified by the name. So let's just name this username, for example. I'm going to copy it, show you the password one, just using password here. That's only for the way it displayed. That is the only way it's important, the type. Name this password. The names are purely optional. That's not. That's important for the browser how to render it. That's optional because that is, the, as I said, the name, how you can identify it on the server side then, which we're not covering right now. And add a button. Give this also a type of submit, which basically says this button is meant to submit this form. That's important if we would have several buttons within a form and other buttons would do other things and only one button should really send the form to the server, then we would have to define which button is responsible for this. And just give it a text of submit. This is the text which will appear on the button. Now reload our page and here we got our form. Now we got our username field here and our password field, as you can see, which also automatically hides all our characters. And if we, if we hit submit, well, it, it tries to submit it. As you can see, it automatically created a GET request, which might not tell you anything right now. We will come back to that too. And try to send it to the server. Obviously, we don't have a server here. So, yeah, nothing really happened here. Now, there are two more elements I would like to talk about. But these are very basic elements for styling or for creating visual layouts, for layouting our page. And that's why I will go into detail about them in a later stage. But for now, just be aware that the div and the span tags are also very important for a document when it comes to laying it out and styling it. So that's it for this video. And we'll dive deeper into our HTML structuring and so on in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.